Actually, I'm quite confident we have some pretty exciting things to talk about today. Uh, here's my disclaimer slide. I am a consultant to live on laboratories. Other than that, I'm completely untainted. The title of the talk, The Role of Glutathione in Anti-Aging Medicine, I think is pretty significant. There's a little bit of controversy, but probably more agreement than there is controversy in the increasing recognition of the importance of a potent antioxidant system in your body as your ultimate protector against toxicity and disease. And as you review the literature, the more and more you look at any disease, regardless, you're able to see that a disease that's highly symptomatic has a minimal antioxidant status. Actually, although we tend in bio biology and biological medicine to stay away from extremes or absolutes, I have yet to find, and I've looked quite hard, I have yet to find any disease process or any toxin that does not mediate its symptoms or its manifestations of toxicity other than through pro-oxidant mechanisms. This is one reason why so many people who have finally gotten on the bandwagon with high-dose vitamin C therapy have uniformly had such profoundly positive reactions, at least in symptomatology, in virtually all disease processes. Really, about the only time you ever have any problems with this approach is if somebody is so highly toxic with their endogenous store of toxins is that your initial dosing enlivens the intracellular enzymes to the point that the initial therapy causes a relatively brisk detoxification. And so the clinical symptom is the first time you start using this, the patient feels a little worse and whatever symptomatology profile they had will become more manifest during that initial brisk retox uh, detoxification phase. Now glutathione, <clears throat> I've done a lot of work with vitamin C. Most people that know me know that that's been my realm for some time. But I don't like to think of myself as just a pro-vitamin C uh, physician. What I am is pro-antioxidation. Now in the body, vitamin C is far and away your most important extracellular antioxidant in your blood, in your lymph, uh, in the extracellular spaces. And it's very important inside the cell, but inside the cell, glutathione rules. It rules because number one, it's extremely concentrated inside the cell much, much higher levels of glutathione inside the cell than in the blood or extracellularly. Also, and this is fairly characteristic of antioxidants in general, vitamin C with glutathione are synergistic. Whatever, whatever antioxidant is in excess at the time when other antioxidants have been oxidized will generally help to reduce those antioxidants and bring them back to their active state. But this is one point that I found very little emphasized that's important to realize in all this reduction oxidation or redox business. And that is, once your antioxidant is oxidized, it's pro-oxidant and it becomes a toxin because the entire nature of a toxin is that it's pro-oxidant. 
Believe it or not, there is nothing simpler on the planet, and this is why vitamin C and other antioxidants, but especially vitamin C, will neutralize virtually every toxin there is. It's because toxins do their damage by robbing electrons. So this is why you always need a constant influx of fresh antioxidants so that you can continue to recharge the oxidized antioxidants back to their reduced potent state. Glutathione is relatively unique as an antioxidant for two reasons. One is it's a tripeptide. It's three amino acids connected together. Glutamic acid or glutamate, cysteine, and glycine. Another and extremely, to me, fascinating aspect of glutathione, which I think is why the creator made it the most important intracellular antioxidant, is that it's the only antioxidant that I know of that does not become a prooxidant when it's oxidized. And this is because when you take the electrons away from glutathione, it's just not sitting there by itself having a prooxidant effect, but rather the sulfhydryl groups of two glutathione molecules then bind together, making it relatively electron speaking inert. And this makes an enormous amount of sense from a mm, evolutionary, selective type of thinking, if you will, because the last place you want for any reasons to have an increasing pool of prooxidation is inside the cell. <clears throat> now something that's been floating out there for some time that I alluded to as I started the talk is that an increasing body of evidence is clearly showing that oxidation and an increasing pool of oxidation is part and parcel of senescence or aging. Uh, simplistically it's very simple, the more oxidative stress that you have and some of these synonyms, if you will, are free radicals, prooxidants, electron depletions. All of these things refer to the same thing. They just make it more interesting to write a paper when you use a number of different phrases. But the more oxidative stress you have, the more you will facilitate and accelerate. I have here most disease processes. I've got news for you. It's all disease processes. Even if Prooxidation isn't the thing that initiated a disease process, it will always accelerate and worsen that process. This is why you're very safe with trying to bolster antioxidant defense no matter what the process is because the symptomatology is all going to be manifested directly or indirectly through prooxidant mechanisms.